according to the cloud. All right, well, welcome everyone. We are excited to be here with you all today at the Arizona Science Teachers Association Conference. We would like to jump in today and ask that if you haven't yet requested your Learning Blade account, that you do so, so that you can experience all the amazing things that Learning Blade has to offer. Um, you can also visit the site address linked on the slide and follow the prompts to request an account. Once you fill out the form, we hope to have you up and running with your Learning Blade account, um, as Josh mentioned earlier, in less than 48 hours. If after this presentation you have any questions, you can always reach us at our Arizona at learningblade.com address listed on the slide. So I will throw both of those for you in the chat. So my name is Erin Coker. I'm a former science teacher and district administrator. Um, I'm coming from uh, Colorado right now. So I'm sort of your neighbor, not too far away. Um, now I will let Josh, um, my colleague, introduce himself. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Josh Snyderman. I am um, the vice president at Learning Blade and um, been, been with Learning Blade for seven years, really since the ground up. Um, and just watched it grow and really watched the impact of providing students with career awareness in the STEM fields and computer science um, and excited to share this free resource and just start off, if I may, by saying today's like an introduction and what we would love is to continue the conversation. So please feel free to reach out to Aaron or I anytime at that email, Arizona at learningblade.com and and hopefully we can just stay in touch and help you and help your school, help your district utilize this resource, which is a, a free resource uh, from the governor's office. Thanks, Aaron. So as Josh mentioned, our agenda today is fairly simple and straightforward. We're going to give you some background on Learning Blade and a live tutorial showing you how the program works. We will also have time at the end of the presentation today for Q&A. And we would also like to encourage you to use the chat today um, so that we can interact in our virtual space. All right, so please take a moment to read the objectives and key features Learning Blade has to offer that we are going to cover today in our presentation. Today, we will also be making connections to the theme of this year's symposium, symposium about cross-cutting concept, about the cross-cutting concept, cause and effect. All right, so before we dive into Learning Blade, we want to begin by grounding in our why. So I will give you a minute or so to review the data on this slide and consider, when you think about the work that you do in your school or district and the students that you serve, what most resonates with you? When you're ready, we will invite you to fill up the chat with your thoughts. So again, what most resonates with you when you consider the data being presented here? And I'll also add the question in the chat for you. Absolutely, Tracy, you are correct. Women are underrepresented. Can I um, quickly address a question in the chat box that people are saying they don't see their school listed when they go to the site to fill out the form? I believe um, one of the options uh, is to just to say that your district's not listed. So on the select district, you can say my district's not shown, and then you can just fill in um, your district name on the other, on the other district um, field. So we don't have all the districts listed. There's 700. Um, there's some small school districts, so it would be hard to sort through 700. So we put the big ones in there and the small one, if you're a smaller one or maybe a medium size, you can just say my district's not shown. 
Thanks so much, Josh. And the sm all schools of all sizes and districts of all sizes are equally important to us. So thank you for that. And thank you, Annette, for um, adding to the chat that you are correct, STEM jobs do pay more at all levels. And thank you, Lisa, minorities are also underrepresented in STEM. I'll give us about 30 more seconds to add some more thoughts to the chat. Thank yeah. you, Melissa. Absolutely. Diverse populations are missing. And Tracy, we have some ideas about why students are not interested in STEM careers. So excited to talk to you about that today. Yeah, good point, Wanda. Wanda uh, direct messaged me, but she said, you don't have to be a genius to be in, in the STEM workforce. I, I like to talk about that. Like, Not all STEM professionals are PhD scientists. Do you know what's funny, Josh? I was just about to say a few key points that we want to lift up. Point number one being STEM is not just about PhD science. Many STEM jobs can be attained by getting a two-year degree or certification through a community college pathway. In fact, 70% of STEM jobs actually don't require a four-year degree. And as someone already mentioned, STEM jobs do pay more money. In fact, just by students taking CTE courses in high school, they will make more money after high school when compared to students who do not take those courses. And of course, as many folks have already pointed out in the chat, when we consider what it looks like to truly lead for equity in this work, we're talking about changing the narrative specifically for our minority students and our girls. The more we can expose students to opportunities they have in STEM, the more likely they will see themselves in those careers. Mm -hmm. All right, and here's some more data to back that idea up. According to the University of Massachusetts, middle school students are beginning to make these career decis decisions and they're going to stick with them. If they don't know about STEM careers, they will not see themselves working in those careers. And uh, Josh taught me this saying, uh, we like to say, you can't be what you can't see. So this is about showing students the variety of STEM careers that are out there and the skills they need to cultivate to be successful in these careers. Engaging students at the middle school level is critical according to the research. So I, you know, if I can just ask the question, maybe it's on your agenda, Aaron, I apologize, but on that last, oh, you're going to it, I think, on this slide. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So ladies and gentlemen, do your students ever ask you, when are we going to use this? Would love to see your reactions to this question in the chat. If you just want to do a thumbs up, a yes and no, maybe a comment. This is a question that my students used to ask me all the time. And what I really love about Learning Blade is that Learning Blade offers relevance through engaging with phenomenon because it is organized into 12 real world missions. So this slide is meant to articulate how Learning Blade contextualizes learning for students by exposing them to STEM in an engaging way that's on the left, and then for the teacher, we're providing you with resources to support and bolster the curriculum and lessons you are already using in your school. That's on the right. Just to add, if I may, Aaron, the, the standard alignment on that last slide, um, we are aligned to standards grades five through nine, English, social studies, science, and math, as well as the, um, uh, some computer science standards as well. Yes, and thank you, Tracy, for your question in the chat. Um, we are going to get to exactly what the lessons look like. Um, and I would say, yes, formal is a good way to describe them. Um, and I love the comment from Diane. Yes, starting your lessons and really grounding in how are you going to use this is such a best practice. Thank you for sharing. So we know that the work that you do is multifaceted and saying that you are busy, I believe is truly an understatement. Teaching is the most important career that exists. So we hope to provide you with a resource that will be meaningful for your students and truly easy for you to pick up. So for example, if there is a particular standard or skill that you know your students need extra practice with, 
as Josh mentioned, we can show you how to find that standard and lesson in Learning Blade. If you also need your students to be busy working on missions while you're pulling small groups of students that need extra support, Learning Blade is an option for that too. We wanted to share with you a few select quotes from what teachers are saying about their experience with Learning Blade. So I'll pause here for a second so you can read these quotes. I love that last one, if I may just say, Aaron, because yeah. I've had I've had many teachers tell me that their students ask for more learning blade because they like that one. So at the end there, Susan coming in says, my students even ask to be assigned more lessons. Like that's not, she's not the only teacher that's told me that, which is kind of fun. Right, I love that theme of easy to implement and engaging for students that comes through in all of these quotes. Well, and, and to point out that I think Erin asked me to find some quotes for her, really, because she's like, look, this part of the theme of ASTA sessions with this amazing project is really SEL, right? The social emotional health of the teacher. And we wanted to pull up and make it really clear that teachers find this to be an easy to use beneficial thing to help in the classroom. Absolutely. So this slide gives you a glimpse of Learning Blade from what I like to call the mission level. So there are 12 total missions in Learning Blade and they are listed here. We're gonna dive more deeply into these later today. The thing that makes Learning Blade really unique is not only that students are engaging in phenomenon-based real-world STEM through science and interdisciplinary learning, but Learning Blade also layers on careers and you'll see that on the far right-hand column. So while they are getting learning and engaging in the mission, students are also getting to experience firsthand the careers and opportunities that exist within those missions. So within each mission, Learning Blade offers a host of different experiences for students. You can see the Learning Blade interactive toolbox has hands-on activities, 3D printing, um, and even design thinking. Students will engage in a variety of learning modes while in a mission. I will also say these activities can be used a la carte if you don't have the time to complete an entire mission. So for example, maybe you really love the career awareness aspect of Learning Blade. You might pick up the career videos, the lessons, the paper crafts, potentially in an advisory setting. So whether you choose to start from the mission level or the interactive toolbox level, we hope that you can see now that Learning Blade has many resources and entry points. And, and Saturn has an, an interesting comment, if I can just address it, that maybe we haven't actually had slide or direct conversation on the LGBTQ plus community. So I think, you know, I'm taking that feedback direct to the um, owner and CEO of the company, and hopefully we will adjust that accordingly moving forward. Thank you for pointing that out, Saturn. Yes, thank you for lifting that up. So before Josh jumps in and walks us through a live tutorial, I want to give you the lay of the land by walking through a mission diagram. So these are two mission diagrams for the mission Rescue Robots on the left and Hack Attack on the right. So what you will notice is that the orange circles are highlighting the tools and interdisciplinary learning that students will engage in when they complete a mission. And then the green circles are the teammates or careers they will encounter as they problem solve the mission challenge. So if we are to think about the mission as a whole, there's about eight hours or 45 lessons of content. Within that eight hours, the tool teammate lessons are about one hour in total, and the remaining lessons make up the rest of the mission. And each one of those orange circle lessons is about 10 to 15 minutes. You also have the option of doing an express mission, which is about 25% of the whole. So that's about two hours total. 
And we're going to look at these mission diagrams in uh, more detail here in a second. And if I can just add, just to point out, if you can just put those diagrams back up for one quick sec, Aaron, is that every tool and every teammate has a science standards aligned mission. So whether, I mean, every career has a science-based lesson um, that they can look at, right? So as well as, you know, maybe something you can share with another teacher and team teach and do an English lesson or the math lessons, um, you know, with a math teacher. So there's a lot of opportunities here, but there are, there's a science lesson for every circle you're seeing on the screen. So I have just given you an overview of Learning Blade, but we wanna stop here for a second so that we can hear from you. But before we dive into our conversation, we want to share with you the mission outlines document. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the chat right now. So go ahead and open up the mission outline document, and we'll give you a couple minutes to read through that. And as you're reading, there are three different questions that we would like to chat with you about after everyone has time to read through the mission diagram. So we'd love to hear which mission stands out to you as something you know your students will love. Are there careers listed in the missions that you know will be new to your students or that they did not consider to be STEM? Um, and where do you see this theme of the symposium about cause and effect showing up? Just at a high level, at the mission level, where do you see cause and effect coming up? And we have the definition for cause and effect according to NGSS on the slide for you as well. So let's just take about two minutes to preview the mission diagram document. Which is the link is in the chat box. And Tracy, we will answer your question. All right, so as you feel ready, we would love to invite you to share your thoughts on any of these questions. Feel free to use the chat or come off mute and share your thoughts. We're only about 14 participants, so I think we have time to pause here and have a discussion. Which mission stands out to you as something that you know your students will love? Are there careers listed in the missions that you know will be new to your students or that they did not consider STEM? And then finally, where at the mission level do you see this theme about cause and effect? Thank you, Diane. Dolphin Rescue is a very popular mission. Um, the the fresh the one on fresh food because we have um, 
raised garden beds. And so we do gardening. And so I think for them, they're gonna really enjoy that one. I've actually had some schools use the fresh food mission and then have a desire to start a garden. So I like that you could do it in reverse. You already have those, some of those careers and technologies that hydroponics lessons and crop yield lessons and uh, you know, all sorts of cool lessons in there. Annette just added a thought about giving students choice and voice in the chat. Um, I remember when I was teaching, I had the bingo board, choice board. So it's almost like kids can choose whatever mission that really captures their engagement and their thinking and they can do that mission. Thank you about that comment about there are so many careers listed that students would not know about. That's so true. Do you also think, Annette, that they would be surprised to hear that the careers listed are STEM careers? Yeah, I think they would um, not associate that. I think kids still, even though we work really hard at it, they still think of STEM as being, you know, oh, I need a eight year college degree and I need to know math and yeah. Absolutely. And thank you, Kimberly, for hitting on that theme of cause and effect um, and that seeing a problem and how people can have a positive effect on solving the problem. Absolutely. And actually to that, to Kimberly's point, that's some of the, someone mentioned earlier, you know, one of the slides on the data of girls in STEM. Um, the Girl Scouts wrote a report, Generation STEM, that says 92% of girls want careers that help solve problems, that help people. And so, you know, showing that STEM is problem solving will making a direct connection to that in the real world will encourage a, a wider uh, diversity of participation in the STEM workforce. Yeah, and Tracy, um, I know Josh and the team are always thinking about and considering new ideas for missions. Um, but I, I will also say that Learning Blade has a computer science aspect that Josh is going to talk a little bit more about later in this session that I think would be particularly interesting for your students who want to be video game designers. And you don't see the comment, Aaron, but Wanda pointed out that the energy sources would be popular right now because of the drought situation um, and, the, and learning about hydroelectric power and things of that nature. So that could be a real, almost a teachable moment, right? Where you use energy in that way. So that's, thank you, Wanda, for that comment. I agree with Lisa pointing out welders um, in particular, and that's one of those STEM careers that, you know, off the bat, they make really good money, um, and it is a STEM career. I, I always talk about welders this way for my fellow science teachers. I taught science for 10 years, and I never thought to invite a welder to my classroom, right, because I didn't think of that as a STEM career or a science career. I brought in the people working at university on CERN, right? How about people who are studying the stars? But a welder is looking at the properties of materials and metals and using his knowledge or her knowledge of those materials to put things together. So um, I think that, you know, that's a perfect example of expanding the definition of what STEM looks like. Awesome. Good all right, thank, yeah. So thank you all for engaging in the conversation and filling up the chat. Um, I think it's now time for us to dive into the online platform. And I had thought, Josh, potentially that we could have people vote on a mission that you could start with. Sure. Does anybody um, have any I, preferences? As people vote in the chat box, I wanna answer Tracy's question about online platforms. So I will get into that a little bit, but we have direct links to the missions. Um, you can use it with Google Classroom. We are a clever SSO or single student sign-on ready program. So if your district school program uses clever, we can do that. We single sign-on with Schoology. And obviously having just gone through the pandemic, um, thousands of schools uh, use Learning Blade as a uh, Canvas. Uh, good question, Kimberly. So with Canvas, we have a workaround. Um, the workaround is through Clever. Um, and so it's, it, there's an option. It's probably just as easy to go to our website at that point um, than getting the district involved with all the workaround solutions. But we, I have a whole district with 50 schools in right, my hometown, Chattanooga, 
that uses Canvas and it is in there, but it, it's in there through Clever. So if you know, if, you're, if your IT coordinator would be willing to do that, we can make that happen and give him the code. It's called a SAML link, an SAML link, and we can give him the code to do that. But um, so I hope that answers your question there. Um, Tracy is asking, is this an independent activity or students work in teams? Is it teacher directed or students with a mission on their own? Sort of all of the above. Let me get in there and log in and show you what it looks like live. As we're going live, Tracy, you can think about some of those questions you just had. I'll answer them in different ways. Um, but honestly, all of the above, right? So it's, Learning Blade can definitely be student directed, student self-centered. It can definitely be teacher directed. Uh, let me share my screen, make sure it's up and running. Um, you guys see I'm logged into Learning Blade right here, right now. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a tour of the student, of the student experience and the teacher experience. But I also want to be mindful of uh, Tracy's question and others' questions. So I'm actually pulling those up so I can keep watching the chat box as we're going. Did anyone vote for a mission? I didn't see a vote. So I'm going to go probably to two different missions, our energy and ag mission, and I'll take you through those. Um, so let me just log in and show you. So first off, if you come to that learningblade.com slash AR, that's how you get your account. And you can share that if you're a coordinator, a district person, an ASTA regional person, you can share that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Please keep your uh, videos on. We'd love that. Um, so thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Yeah, we just trained them all, all the last two days, like keep your videos off for bandwidth issues, but I think they could have theirs on and it would be fine. Oh yeah, we're a small group. You can keep them on and um, that way I can ask questions with thumbs up, thumbs down, we get rapid response. <laughs> Um, so getting into Learning Blade proper, um, you just, it's, so there's, if, if you had Clever, you would log in through Clever and we're sending out Clever invites to all of the school districts right now that use Clever. So those will be sent out this week and next week. If you don't have Clever and you just got an account, you'll just come here and you'll click login. Um, actually, oops, I wanted to show you on the login page, it says student self sign up. So if your students click that, if you're a non-clever school, non-schoology, whatever, it says, please enter the class code provided by your teacher. You'll, I'm going to show you in a second, you'll create class codes. And when you submit it, it's going to put you into a school and the student can create their account in 30 seconds, right? First name, last name, username, password. If you're concerned about security and data, it could be first initial, first three last initials. Like you can make up code to put in here. So you can figure out how you want to do that. But then once the student has the account, they're going to log in. Uh, they'll come back and log in. I'm logging as a teacher um, just to show you that when you're a teacher, how do you get that class code? Really simple. Click on classes, click create a class, and then you'll see you have all these class codes you can use, right? But I want to start with the student view, uh, what it looks like. Of course, each student's logging in individually, so you as the teacher can get individualized student performance. Um, and to Tracy's question, a lot of um, teachers use Learning Blade in the science classroom as enrichment, as um, early finisher activity, maybe a bell ringer once a week, something where you're adding careers. Um, and it, maybe it's directly related, like we've got an earthquake science lesson in our Haiti orphanage, um, and you're doing earthquake science and you do that career and learn about that, or maybe it's tangential, right? Um, I'm going to get into our energy mission and click on the full mission. This is what students see. So I'm logged in as a student, right? Um, they can see their progress, what they've started, what they haven't started. Um, if they clicked on environmental engineer, there's a video lesson about environmental engineers, which is short two minute video. Um, there's a math lesson on calculating energy, um, a science lesson on the scientific method. So I'm gonna start there. This is a great uh, experiment. You know, many of you have probably done this where you have kids take thermometers outside and you put them in different color boxes and see how different colors absorb heat a little bit differently, especially black. Um, but here's the question, can the color of your house reduce your energy bill, right? And Learning Blade lessons are all the online. There's two real parts to Learning Blade, the online. And then as Aaron said earlier, we have those resources like mission challenges and projects and 3D printing activities. So the online lessons are generally 20 to 30 pages long, um, eight to 10 questions. Students are reading. We were created by the former vice presidents of ACT, that test you take to get into college. And so this is about reading text 
and showing your understanding. So here they're reading about the scientific method and how environmental engineers might use the scientific method um, and how the importance of formulating a question. Well, based on the scenario we're giving you, which question would you consider here? What color of a house absorbs more or less heat? Uh, how do colors reflect or absorb light and indoor temperature of a structure? So it's probably the outside, right? I'm gonna get the next one wrong so you can see what happens. But every question is followed by the correct answer. And to Tracy's question of integration, um, students are getting the answers as they're going. So as an early finisher activity or as maybe um, independent work, they're getting constant feedback within the system. Um, researching a question, right? So here, which of these questions will help you answer does the color? So this is a multi-select, right? Um, and they're getting in. Oh, I was going to get it wrong. I'll get the next one wrong. I'm just too, I just, I just like this lesson too much. So form, forming a hypothesis. So they're learning about the scientific method. They're learning some of the vocabulary, independent, de dependent variables. So what's independent? What's dependent? Uh, let me get it wrong. Temperature. Temperature. Right? Read the definition for independent variables and try again. So it's given a little bit of feedback. Um, if they get it wrong twice, they can then move forward. They've lost their, some credit, lost some points, and they're uh, seeing the correct answer and moving on in this lesson, right? So that's an example of a science lesson around environmental engineers. Um, you know, there's 400 lessons, over 100 science lessons. I like to think a lot of the uh, math lessons are also really applicable to science, even the English lessons, they're reading about science content. If we got into the fresh food mission, which happens to be my favorite, um, you know, we can see, so I'm trying to show you traditional science content. And, you know, if we went to, um, nope, I didn't want to go to hydroponics. I wanted to go to do, 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 organic farming. You know, we have a Mendel pea plant lesson, right? So I'm showing you the traditional, and then I'll show you sort of the non-traditional like a manufacturing lesson in the scientific and science in that process or how, how static electricity is used in painting cars. So here we're talking about genetics and the study of genetics and you know learning the vocabulary um, and then getting in here and thinking about how do Punnett squares work, um, thinking about the ratios that are presented in these squares and then thinking about a real world problems. So seeing if we can get the answer right based on the scenario given um, getting it wrong, getting feedback, can't go forward, getting it wrong. Now, also, I should point out, there is an audio track on every page. So those of you that work with ELL, ESL students, um, you can use this resource for that, uh, for that crowd, which is great. Awesome. Um, get that Zoom bar back. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so there's lots of different lesson types in here uh, that you can use. And um, I'm not, you know, there's there's just so much to show you. I can, I'm just trying to give you a sense and a taste and a flavor for it. But to the question of teams, students can be put in teams. And I'll show you that from the teacher view. Um, and so the way they get in teams, when you're in a teacher, you can put students into teams in your class by clicking on your class title and then clicking on class role. And so you can see here, I can create a new team called ASTA or STEM. Um, am I gonna get it right, Vanel? Is it STEM? Where's the capital Z? Capital That's a Z, capital Z, I-N-G. Okay, STEM. Although ASTA. technically this is the ASTA symposium, but hey. I know, I was gonna do <laughs> ASTA, but you're my bud, so I put in STEM amazing. So I'm putting these kids in the STEM amazing team, right? And then you can see that on the dashboard, the students can see it and, um, the, the teacher can see how, which group, and I think Stamazing is probably losing on this one. Sorry, you guys haven't even started a lesson, so you're not really, lost, <laughs> not really losing because you haven't started the race, but, um, but you can see that there's lots of things there. Uh, you can create teams for students. All right, so this is all good, good stuff. Um, then on the teacher resources page, you have all sorts of additional resources that you can tap into, um, like 3D printing lessons around the theme of the mission. 
And so as an example, you know, in our car manufacturing mission, oh, I was gonna show you a lesson there, but I'll, I'll come back to that maybe later. Um, we have a 3D printing lesson, sort of like the Pinewood Derby, uh, where students can uh, get a base model, tinker on it in Tinkercad, redesign it. And what's unique about our 3D printing lessons is they're meant to be science experiments. This is actually a motion and forces lab where you're gonna change the mass of your car after your final design by adding pennies into the cockpit and seeing how mass affects velocity and acceleration, right? But also you're allowing kids to design their car and to maybe add some flavor and, and some of their personal nuance to it, right? Um, so we have lessons like that. Um, another experiment in 3D printing that I really love uh, is our airplane one. So you could have students print an airplane and this is super quick print job. It's like really thin. I should have one near me, but I don't today. Um, the, where students will tinker on the design of the airplane, they'll go outside and do multiple trials and measure time of flight or distance flown, take averages, sort their data, put it in a graph, compare it to others and do data analytics, but on a fun 3D printed project. We have found, I have found, because I've been giving away 3D printers for years, that a lot of teachers, kids like to print Baby Yoda, right? They like to print these static objects. But we, and Baby Yoda's cool, don't get me wrong, I like Baby Yoda. But we want them to print something that they're going to test, analyze, maybe re-tinker, redesign, go back and improve, or, and, or at least be able to, to show the data whether their redesign improved the results. So we have, I think those are pretty fun lessons. Does hey, anyone use 3D printers? Go ahead, Erin. Sorry, I was just gonna jump in. Um, when I was a teacher, I used to teach what I called a science fair elective in the afternoon because I wanted to get more of my students to actually participate in the science fair. And when Josh showed me these 3D printing activities, I thought to myself, wow, that would have been really cool to have for my science fair elective because I would have been teaching students how to do science fair before they actually did their own project, um, which I thought would have been really fun. Sorry, Absolutely. what was your question? Oh, no, that's awesome. Someone asked about the paper craft, the, the origami. So we have a guy in our office who is just, uh, he's, he's, he's got unique skills and he created an origami paper craft for every single, um, career and learning blade. And they're actually, they look like little Minecraft figures. Just wanna point out, when you click on a download, it asks how many students you're gonna use it with. A rough estimate is what we're looking for. We're just trying to say to the state, you know, maybe this many students saw this lesson this year, rough estimate. But um, so here's the paper craft is what we call it. Turn, it folds into a Minecraft figure. It's got the career description on the back of the head. And obviously every career and all the technologies have a paper craft, corresponding paper craft. So, you know, we got our machinist, we got our marine biologist, you know, we got our scuba diver, right? Um, and I'm gonna jump off with the scuba diver to show you that we have parent lessons. And this was serendipity in my classroom. It was true serendipity. Uh, students, I am fed up with grading your work. So tonight your homework is go home and talk to your parents. And what happened was parents emailed me and said, that was awesome. Because if the homework is I need a written slip that you had a conversation at home about photosynthesis, the parent signs it, some parents do that. And then, because what do most middle schoolers say when their parents say, what'd you learn in school today? Let me see it in your mouths. What is, what is it? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. So turning the parent discussion into once a month homework is really, I think, a cool way of engaging families, which actually the Every Student Succeeds Act now has a um, real uh, heavier requirement on engaging parents. And a lot of people think that's class dojo. Well, this is what's going on today. We're sort of saying, no, 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 have a conversation. And then after writing all these lessons, I, I did the research in reverse. It, this is obvious research, but it turns out students whose parents talk to them about school, they do better in school. So like, why wouldn't we as, as, as educators bake that into the cake a little bit, help parents have those conversations. But what's unique about these, I think, is 
if your student has done the dolphin rescue mission or the energy missions, oops, and um, what we have is a little table talk starter. Did you know scuba diving could be a full-time high paying STEM job? Sure, you may know there's recreational scuba divers, but can you think of what other, what types of companies and organizations would need commercial scuba divers? So they're gonna, they already know a lot of this from doing the lessons. So they get to shine. They get to talk about, you know, the underwater Aquarius lab or, you know, like people that are doing research in science-based scuba diving, right? And talk about how maybe it's used in bridge construction or in the military or in all these different settings in the police department and, and really think about scuba diving as a profession. Um, and so we have the same sort of conversation starter for each mission. So yeah, what we have here are lots of resources for everybody. I'm gonna show you one more and then I'm gonna go back to the teacher, just the teacher element, which is our mission challenges. So our mission challenges, if we went to the energy one um, and um, I don't know who, who has their kids build wind turbines or what have you, but we have a mission challenge activity, very simple, hands-on hands lesson. It's using recyclable materials. But I love this one. It never occurred to me in my classroom, but if you use a two liter bottle as your base, you can fill it with water and then your base will stay solid or you can fill it with rocks or fill it with marbles or whatever, as we've done in this case. So you, we have a lesson where you use recyclable materials to build a wind turbine that will allow the students to, um, to test, test that out. And this actually comes with um, the, the rubric for the different lesson plans here. Um, and we also have a carbon footprint worksheet. We have all sorts of lessons inside the energy mission challenge. Um, chat box looks like it just blew up on me. Do, is there stuff going on in there? Uh, oh, it's STEM month cheat. That's right. I know Danelle's got some crazy great hacks that she's like the master of the STEM hacks. But I think that's a good one because I never thought like I used to do wind stuff in my class and the base was always the problem. Never occurred to me, do something you can fill and sort of make heavy. So I like that. Um, any questions so far as I, I've shared sort of the resources page, that offline element, that hands-on, there's one more here, design thinking. I think this is sort of like STEM was a, has been a buzzword for 10 years, what have you. Uh, I think design thinking is coming. It's sort of going to start to take over a little bit. Uh, the idea that you, you start with empathy in mind, right, in your problem solving, um, that you're looking for real world challenges. So here's just an example, our fresh food one. Um, we've all done the egg drop. Here's a fun one, which is called the potato chip challenge. So you, which is, there's a couple potato chip challenges. I've seen the one where you get the Pringles to go in a circle. This is one where you have students design a container for a single Pringle and out of recyclables. And then maybe you do a test on it, right? Drop a book. In this case, we're saying the idea might be send it through the US Postal Service. So the container that's the lightest weight and the chip survives is the winner of this school-wide potato chip challenge, right? And so they can work in teams, they can collaborate, they can communicate, they can creatively think together and problem solve together. Um, so we have 12 of these sorts of design challenges here. And the last thing I'd say is um, the, the data, right? So you can log into your class and you can click on report and you can see who did what, when, and how much did they do. I only have two students in my class, Marie Curie and George uh, Carver, but I can see how many lessons they've done. Um, I can see their scores on every lesson, right? I can see the amount of time that they spent on those lessons, the date they completed those lessons. And so I have, I have a data. And then if I'm actually looking for standards, and I'm gonna end on this. If I'm saying, you know, I'm trying to do lessons on density, and so I'm wondering if I can use Learning Blade to supplement or enrich the concept of density in the workplace. I can come to my class. I can click on any class, right? I can click on the assignments tab and I can search the lessons in Learning Blade to see where density standard is, it, where it is in Learning Blade. So I can come over here and select the Arizona State Standards and we update our standards every summer. So we're about to go through an update but I can click here um, on the standard and it'll show me what the standard is. There's a geometry standard. Um, I can sort for all the science standards, right? Um, and see 
what science standards are, are being covered in the lessons. And I can type in the search bar density and find lessons that cover that, right? Flying farther, right? So looking at aluminum and different and the and the mass of a plane and innovative materials and airplanes and how that changes the um, the calculus of it. And so the density of the metals is being discussed here. Um, how much metal is there? Um, the physics of swim propulsion, which is related to being a physical therapist and using body mass in water and buoyancy and density to think about the career of a therapist because we're looking at the lesson in the dolphin rescue of uh, physical therapy of the animal, right? Um, and so, right, so I've searched the lesson and I can assign it to my students. Um, so that's what you have in summary. Uh, love to answer some questions, save some time here at the end for that. But you have um, a nice resource as Aaron showed with the quotes earlier, that's pretty easy to use. You just gotta get in there. I will say, Tracy, I or Melissa, I looked for your email. I didn't see it. So I'm thinking there might be something broken in our account as of this today or tomorrow. I'm going to try and fix it. Um, but uh, we'll figure it out tomorrow. And I have your email, Melissa, I believe, because you registered for this. So I will be in contact with Melissa, Tracy, and Lisa about their accounts. Unless you want to go and just try again, go to learningblade.com slash AZ and fill those in again. Um, cause I'm not sure why I don't see your account. Um, Melissa. I, I redid my account. Like you asked Josh. And, um, then I got a confirmation email. Perfect. This time. And okay, last perfect. time I didn't. So I think it went through this time. Oh, awesome. So I would ask the same then. Thank you very much for Melissa. If you can, um, just re go to learningblade.com slash AZ, fill it in one more time, Melissa, and you'll get your account tomorrow. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop sharing unless there's questions. Um, yeah, it looks like Tracy has a question that she put into the chat, uh, Josh. You. She wants to know, so can you assign just an assignment or do you need to um, do the entire module? Um, and you can do it either way. You can assign individual assignments. You can assign the express mission or you can have students do the entire mission. So it yep. really is up to you on how you want to utilize this in your classroom to build on what you're already doing, the amazing thing <laughs> you're already doing. Yep. And so as an example, I'm just searching engineering careers and learning blade. And I'm seeing that there's about, there's 11 engineering careers, biomedical, environmental, nuclear power, agricultural, mechanical, automotive. And so, you know, instead of using the missions, Tracy and everyone, you know, engineering weeks come in. I, I think I'm just going to show them what an environment, environmental engineer or nuclear engineer will be my lessons this week. Next week, as my bell ringer, I'll introduce them to four or other types of engineers, whatever. So you can, I call that going to the buffet, where you, instead of using the missions, you're picking and choosing. Because I'll tell you, I do not eat mushrooms. Do I have any mush, other mush, fungus haters? Anybody? Yes, thank you, Amanda. Right? Like, so, you know, you don't need everything in the buffet. You take what you need and, and what you like the most. And that's, I really think Learning Blade works like a great buffet. Any other questions? We have about uh, 10 minutes and we'd love to, to just open it up to Q&A. Yeah, open up those microphones. Um, I'll ask, this is this one. Um, the uh, audio portion that goes with the uh, different yes. modules, is that all, only in English or is there Spanish also available? Great question. It is an English only audio. Um, we've looked into the Spanish uh, question a good deal. Um, have not gone that route yet. I can play it for you real quick because I don't think I played it uh, at the beginning. So I'm going to play it just so people can hear the audio. Um, got to find my Zoom box and turn on, there's a special button you got to put, share sound. So I'm gonna share the sound and play the audio. Getting in shape. Imagine what it would be like to make anything, to have the ability to dream something up and then just build it, create it and use it. Your only limit, your imagination. So you can see that the audio track is reading to the students, which can be beneficial for those ESL students as well. Yeah, it's uh, better than nothing, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure, yeah. You know, Wanda, um, you might also consider um, partnering students for the reading, and you could come up with some sort of like partner reading protocol so that they're taking turns reading aloud. That can also really help kids with fluency. 
I would agree. And small reading groups, like as stations, this can be used that way. Um, while each student can log in individually, another aspect of this is the teacher just pulling up the slides and reading as a class, popcorn style. So that's a thought pattern you could use. Um, and then just to point out the obvious, I showed you science lessons. There's English lessons looking at comma placement and punctuation and stuff. So as a science teacher, I always, I know we all share the mindset, like shouldn't science be the number one thing we're testing because it includes math, it includes science, it includes reading. Um, but this might be a program you could bring back and share with one of your colleagues and do a grade level sort of project where this is that thing you do this quarter as a team. Because what you are doing, I guarantee, is you're cross-firing some synapses when you show students English lessons about STEM content, and they're starting to see that, in, that relevance. So I think I'll end on that, just sharing that one slide, if I may, which is, um, oh gosh, I didn't even tell you. Does anyone teach computer science? No hands raised. We do have a whole course on computer science. I should just mention that. Um, so you can share learning blade for your computer science teacher, but I was gonna end on the data. Um, you know, 93% of teachers think that learning blade, this is the last bullet here, provides students with real world uh, examples of math and science. And that's really what we're trying to get after. Provide the real world context for the skills you're learning in school in the problem solving careers of the future. And Josh, I just wanna say what I appreciate is it's, I think everybody here recognizes just how many options they have and how many, how many things they can just go to and utilize, which I think we all appreciate. So uh, thank you. Cause I mean, I think that that's what sells it to me is like our teachers are also very good at figuring out where it fits, how much yes. they can fit in, when and where, how to make those connections to our standards. And so um, I just really appreciate that about it. And again, I feel like a lot of teachers don't really know, and I don't feel like I even always know the range of careers that are out there for our students. And so I think this helps a lot with that as well. Absolutely. Like there's careers in Learning Blade that I've never heard of until I got here. Like, and it's crazy to say this, but like, I had never heard of an agricultural engineer. Like I didn't know that's a career path or an agronomist or a UI UX design uh, designer. Like there's things I didn't, you don't know and you can't be what you can't see and you can't teach a student about a career you don't know exists. So that's kind of the thing just to expand the teacher toolbox a little bit. Thank you, Danelle. Hey, yeah, definitely. Do you mind um, telling us more about your question in the chat? Is there a materials bundle we can order? What do you mean by that? So you mentioned there's some hands-on activities and some exploration stuff. And I was just wondering if there's a list of like materials or a bundle yeah. that we can look at to figure That's out. That's well, also because they're used to some amazing workshops where we give yeah. them all the loot they need to do those hands-on pieces. Right. Yeah. So um, we like we don't sell kits, um, mm -hmm. and but it does say right here. You're like on every okay. mission challenge, there is a materials list, right? So two-liter bottle, um, marbles, pebbles, mm -hmm. or pennies, several sheets of paper, ruler, scissors, tape, non-bendable straws. The teachers are going to need to bring in a drill. Um, right, permanent marker. So um, things like that. Uh, but we don't, yeah, there's, I mean, you would have to sort of call through it to find your materials list. Um, and and to, kind of to that point, uh, the way I simplify Learning Blade for, for the teachers is every mission's got a lot of stuff. Um, and so I like to think of it when you're thinking about materials. Oh my God, sorry. When you're thinking about materials, on the resources page, you probably only need materials for the mission that you're going to go and learn about. So if I'm going to do the energy mission, then I'll look at the materials for the energy list. And that's probably how I would handle the materials situation. Yeah, I think the other thing too to point out is that there's nothing on these lists that is outside of things that you couldn't find in a recycle bin or that you already have in your classroom. Um, so nothing really necessarily to buy. Yeah, very, you. You know, we call them kitchen sink activities. Yeah. So can I ask one more question, please? Please, Wanda, go yeah. for it. Uh, you, you had mentioned it's an intriguing thing that you said. You give away a lot of printers. Oh, yeah. Is, is there a list to get on? No. 
the way you get a printer is use Learning Blade. So um, what, you know, each lesson in Learning Blade is 10 minutes long. And if you had 30 students use it as a bell ringer, that's, that's, 30, that's 30 lessons in a day. In 10 days, you did 300, right? If you, have, if you have multiple classes using it or multiple teachers, when you hit 5,000, we just send you a 3D printer. So I would love to be sending, you know, a couple hundred 3D printers to teachers in Arizona this year. The 3D printer we send is a Flash Forge Adventure 3 Lite, which has a heated bed. It's got a nice little fold out plate tray that you can bend so you can pop the thing off. It's about $450. Nice. So it's, a, it's sort of an incentive, a carrot, to give it a try. And, and if you like it and start using it, you're likely to win a 3D printer. We do have right now this summer, if anyone's in a summer camp, we're giving away $100 gift cards for ice cream parties like their candy ice cream party. So, um, you know, really we're looking for teachers that are getting started and using the resource and want to give us some feedback so we can share it with our, you know, with the governor's office and with other teachers about the impact it's having in your environment. Thank cool. you, Wanda. Thank you. And I guess Aaron and I will, I will end, uh, or Aaron can say, have last words, but you can email us anytime to schedule training. So if, if you're someone who's like, oh, I want to bring this to three other teachers or to my district, just email Arizona at learningblade.com. Say the date and time you want the training and you'll get it because we've got a team of trainers. So, um, hey, Josh, can you train my back to school team on August 3rd at this time? Yes. Right. So just send us an email. Aaron, I'll, I'll cede the floor to you. Yeah, I just want to say um, I know because I was in a school last year that last year, just for me in my 15 years of education was the hardest year. And so I just want to offer so much gratitude to all of you. Um, and then as you fill out those site forms, we'll be in touch with you via email and look forward to collaborating with you all. Well, we just want to, um, I'm Lisa Nielsen, and I'm a representative from ASTA, I know most of you, and we just want to thank you for um, taking the time to show